Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's, gals and guys. In this edition of My Media Helpers Entertainment Online, we'll take a peek at Merry and Bright films that are streaming through the Jolly Bandwidth near you. This one is a little late, out of the gate, as I record the audio for this video on New Year's Day of 2022, but that still counts as being the holiday. In all these Christmas videos, I jump on a different streaming service to give you my best picks as to what flicks to check out this 2021 holiday season, or even New Year's Day. There are so many movies on these streaming services, it's hard to determine what's worth watching. I want to recommend some of my personal favorites. The films I present to you aren't necessarily award winners by any stretch of any imagination. These are solid films, and they're certainly worth a watch during the festive season. I should also mention some of these streaming services offer the same exact movies, so I won't be covering the same ones twice, and you may be able to get a review of the same movie on a different video, so make sure to check that all out. And for today's picks, we're going to explore my top five of what Crackle has to offer in no particular order. Crackle has improved over the years, and the offerings for the holiday are diverse and unique, so let's open up these festive packages. Yes, yes, this was originally a Hallmark movie. An overshadowed middle child gets an unexpected second chance, and third, fourth, and many more to make his family's disastrous Christmas day perfect when he finds himself destined to live the day over and over again. Can anyone say a Christmas version of Groundhog's Day? Stole this review from IMDb, and it's right on, so I'm going to read it to you. Over this trailer, it reads a very derivative but likable Christmas TV movie centering on Pete, the less loved put-upon middle child of three boys, born to good-natured middle-aged American parents. After he has nothing else could surely go wrong Christmas Day with his family, a meteor shower occurs. And hey presto, the young man wakes up the next day, only to find he was rewound in time to relive his whole wretched Christmas Day experience all over again. So amongst other things, he gets no presents, gets the blame for ruining the family Christmas dinner, gets pelted with snowballs by the local heavies, also gets clobbered by the same at the inner neighborhood fest of American football game, and joint worst of all, blows his chance of romance with the pretty new girl who arrives next door, and sees his dad and grinchy old granddad argue to point where Gramps walks out on the family before the end of the day. Same day by day, like a junior Bill Murray, he writes every wrong, closing on the real biggie, reconciling his dad and granddad to break the loop at last. It's pretty obviously a Christmas edition of The Wonder Years meets Groundhog Day, the latter right down to young Pete using his repeat time to learn a musical instrument from scratch and find a way to his initially reluctant girl's heart, but it's all done so openly, inoffensively, inamicably. Plus, it's only a Christmas TV show for pity's sake. Your surname would have to be Scrooge for you not to be mildly entertained at the very least. And then I add the two young male female leads give nice performances in their Kevin in Winnie type roles and Bruce Dern is most recognizable cast member as the hard-hearted old grandfather. The only really objectable thing for me about this otherwise pleasant Christmas movie was the wishy-washy original music trilling away in the background but for fans of the two source mentioned this is a nice little film to while away the time if you're stuck indoors at Christmas with nothing much to do. All American Christmas Carol is a 2013 film. The almost 30-year-old unemployment hairdresser Cindy has three children from three different men, who she looks after more badly than well. Cindy lives more for herself and her own pleasures, which consists of her having a dissolute way of life financed by various men. For Harley, the oldest of her children at the age of 13, Skull and Cheese Doodle, there is hardly any time or money to provide for them adequately. The family lives in a trailer park. Cindy doesn't believe in going to work to finance her and her children's lives and lives on welfare. She urges her children to keep track of social welfare officials when they visit. The situation comes to head when Harley's father, Jake Marley, is killed in an accident while playing paintball. After Jake, Marley has been buried and Cindy has missed her son's nativity play because she is once again indulging in her own pleasures. Three Christmas ghosts appear. To Cindy, one of the spirits of the present, then the spirit of the future, and also the spirit of past, they find their way to the young woman. The latter shows her once again what it was like when Cindy's father left the family on Christmas Eve. Cindy was just eight years old at the time. The three Christmas ghosts try to show Cindy 
how her life, and especially that of her children, can get better, and to suggest to her that she has to set her priorities differently as her family and friends are slowly but surely getting enough of Cindy's selfishness. Cindy is now actually trying to use her talent and ingenuity to steer her life and that her children on better paths. This movie is dumb. It's absolutely loosely based on the Charles Dickens novella, A Christmas Carol, if you couldn't tell. Just turn off your brain cells for a couple hours and enjoy it. It does have a certain charm and some good adult humor, so a bit different than most films shown around this time. So I recommend it. Give it a chance. Elliot, The Littlest Reindeer is a 2018 Canadian computer animated Christmas film written and directed by Jennifer Westcott and featuring the voices of Josh Hutcherson, Samantha Bee, Martin Short, Marina Baccarin, Jeff Dunham, and John Cleese. When Blitzen suddenly announces his retirement, Santa needs to find a replacement. Against all odds, Elliot and his best friend Hazel set out to prove that he is the horse for the job. As Elliot and Hazel take on the North Pool reindeer tryouts, Hazel learns that Christmas as we know it may be headed for disaster. Meanwhile, back at the farm, a sinister lady threatens the lives of their friends, and Elliot is faced with the biggest decision of his life. Hmm, this is a good children's movie. Not the demographic for this film, so I came in with a child's eye. The computer animation is solid and has a good cast with acceptable performances. This is a perfect movie to sit down with your children or grandchildren and have fun with it this New Year's Day. Serendipity is a 2001 American romantic comedy film directed by Peter Chelson and written by Mark Klein and starring John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. The film grossed $77.5 million on a $28 million budget. While Christmas shopping at Bloomingdale's in New York City, Jonathan Traeger meets Sarah Thomas when both try to buy the same pair of black cashmere gloves. Despite both being in relationships, a mutual attraction leads them to have dessert at the Serendipity, where Sarah explains that she lets fate's little signals determine many of her life's decisions. After separating, they meet again when each returns to the restaurant to retrieve something they forgot. After ice skating, Jonathan convinces Sarah to give him her number, but when the wind blows it out of his grasp, Sarah thinks it is fate, telling them to back off. After Jonathan disagrees, Sarah decides to let fate reunite them. She has Jonathan write his number on a $5 bill, then uses it to buy breath mints, and promises to sell her copy of the book she was carrying, Love in the Time of Cal Calera or whatever, in which she will write her number in. Fate would need him to find the book. As one last experiment, Sarah and Jonathan board separate elevators in the Waldorf Astoria and agree that if they arrive on the same floor, they are meant to be together. They each pick the same floor, but Jonathan is delayed in finding Sarah, leading to believe that the experiment failed. Disappointed, they separate. Serendipity was shot in New Jersey, New York City, Ontario, and San Francisco, California in the summer of 2000. Following the 9-11 attacks, images of the World Trade Center towers were digitally removed from all skyline shots of New York City. Jennifer Aniston was offered the role of Sarah Thomas but turned it down to avoid being typecast in romantic comedies. Carla Gugino and Claire Forlani, I guess, auditioned for the role of Sarah Thomas. Serendipity premiered in the 2001 Toronto International Film Festival. The film opened at number two at the box office, earning around $13 million, and it's open in weekend behind Training Day. Based on 141 reviews, the film holds a 59% approval rating on the review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes with an average score of 5.80 out of 10. The site's consensus states light and charming, serendipity could benefit from fewer contrivances. Of course. Robert Roger Ever gave the film 1.5 out of 4 stars. The New York Times gave it a mixed review and compared it to cinematic candy floss. Yeah, it's a little sugary. I like both John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale, and they have good chemistry together. I didn't even know this film existed uh, until doing this video. This could very well be a Hallmark movie, but because there's a good script, quality acting, and the movie has actual production values, it could never be one. And yes, that was definitely a slam on Hallmark movies. If you're looking for love with a holiday theme, then Serendipity is waiting to be watched. Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale, is a 2010 Finnish fantasy action horror film written and directed by Halmari Halander about people living near Korean Tree. 
I'm going to be mispronouncing a lot of things in this review, I think. Who discovered the secret behind Santa Claus? The film is based on a 2003 short film, Rare Exports Incorporated, and its 2005 sequel, Rare Exports, the official safety instructions by Almeri Hellander and Jose Helland. I don't know. Both of which involve a company that traps wild Santa Clauses in trains and exports them to locations around the world. In 2003, the Finnish commercial production company Woodpecker Film published a short movie, Rare Exports, Inc. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. The film's writer and director, Halmeri Hellander, established a band of three hunters, a marker, a sniper, and a tracker, searching the wilderness of Le Plain for the wild Santa Claus. After the positive reception from an online audience, Woodpecker Film produced and published the sequel short movie, Rare Exports, the official safety instructions in 2005, again with Hallander as writer-director. In 2007, Halmeri Hallander introduced producer Petre Jacaranta, I'm so sorry for these people's names, to his idea of the feature-length rare export film based on his short films that had already acquired a cult reputation on the internet. Jacaranta's company, Sinet, picked up the rights, and Hallander started to develop a concept together with Jacaranta. In 2009, Rare Exports A Christmas Tale was produced, and in Christmas of 2010, it was released simultaneously in Finland, Norway, Sweden, Germany, the UK, the US, and Australia. The film was distributed by U in the US by Oscilloscope Laboratories, an independent film distribution company, and grossed just over $4 million. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 90% based on 105 reviews, with a weighted average rating of a 7 out of 10. The site's critical consensus reads, Rare Exports is an unexpectedly delightful crossbreed of deadpan comedy and Christmas horror. Roger Ebert awarded the film 3.5 out of 4 stars and called it a rather brilliant lump of coal for your stocking and considered it an R-rated Santa Claus origin story crossed with a thing. He continued apart from the inescapable fact that the movie has Santa and reindeer in it. This is a superior horror film, a spot-on parody of the movies about dead beings brought back to life. Ebert concluded that this is a fine film, an original, daring, carefully crafted film that never for one instant winks at us that it's a parody. In its tone, acting, location, work, music, and inexorably mounting suspense, this is an exemplary horror film, apart from the detail that they're not usually subtitled, and talk about terrifying wild Santas. This is a strange-ass movie, but an entertaining one at that. Expect a little reading time. As mentioned, a lot of it is subtitled, but it doesn't take away from the overall film. You have to suspend belief beyond the norm on this one, as our action star is a young Finnish child who is about 10 years old at the time. Uh, you may recognize him from another obscure film called Big Game, starring Samuel L. Jackson, who played the president in that movie. Watch this creepy Christmas movie this holiday season, as it certainly puts a spin on the Santa Claus mythos. All right, gals and guys, so that's it for this video, and I just wanted you to be aware that last clip that was in that review is actually uh, the Rare Exports Incorporated, which came out in 2003. It wasn't actually from the movie. The trailer was. Uh, the trailer for the actual movie I was reviewing, but the absolute last clip when the hunters were hunting uh, Santa Claus there, that uh, wasn't part of the movie. So anyways, you can find those two other shorts uh, on YouTube, just as a heads up, which I mentioned. So I just wanted to jump in and say uh, Happy New Year. It is I am posting this on New Year's Day. So uh, I just hope you have uh, had a good 2021, have a good 2022. And um, I got one more video to post today. I'm sure I will finish it up. And I will say my concluding thoughts on that video. So until then, gals and guys, I appreciate you as always. Always like, subscribe, uh, share, and hit that bell below. I appreciate you. And I will catch you later.